1972, Tiger was invited to Japan, which had become the mecca of wrestling. Here, fans take the sport very seriously and adore, even worship their wrestlers. None was as respected and revered as Antonio Inoki, who was the reigning king in the wrestling arena. But Inoki's reputation had a downside. He had run out of worthy opponents who could match him in the ring. Right on cue, Tiger entered Japan and met Inoki for the first time. But not in the ring. She had about eight bodyguards with her. And uh, Mr. Antonio Inoki, she just came up to me, just like that, you know. Oh, yeah, what this, what this, you know. So I explained that this is Jutti. She don't understand what Jutti is. You know. So I started getting a little bit upset. Then she started making fun of my dress. Next thing, she started touching my turban. Oh, this, this, this. Soon as she touched that, I slapped her. And she fell down. Then all her body got to jump on me. Antonio Inoki, he came in the picture. You know. It was a riot. And uh, he destroyed everything in the shopping center. The publicity went so big because Japan never seen anything like this. Tiger Jet Shin, 1944年インド生まれ。サーベルを振り回し、コブラクロウを必殺技とする元NWF ヘビー級チャンピオン。This fight would set the stage for a Tiger Inoki rivalry that would last for years. Inoki would be quoted as saying, To beat this Indian, you have to give me a baseball bat. Right away, the phones are ringing from everywhere now. They want me, other company want me, this company want me. Everything was sold out. Here. So the company started making big money, then I started making big money. It was gold, you know. Anything you touch is gold. Tiger became an instant phenomenon in Japan, selling out stadium after stadium. He became the wrestling icon that the Japanese loves to hate. You have to be a showman, you have to understand spectacle, and Tiger understood spectacle, especially in Japan. They love it when the foreign wrestlers come over, and the more crazy that they are, the more that they like it, and Tiger knew this, so that's why he started to adapt things like the saber, and he'd wear the headband, and he'd run, and he'd just run through the entire crowd and make his presence known and get people all excited and flared up. Everybody was so scared because... He hit everybody, for real. So then, you know, if your eyes go maybe like a eye contact kind of with the tiger, he for sure come to you and hit you. This is not, not only acting, it was real. I think that that he was he was good enough in the ring, and that he uh, he had a he had the personality, he had the charisma, he had what that one I, you know you can't say it. It's that what they call the it factor. He's got that one little thing that just separates him from everybody else. And so in Japan, he became even more of a character. So that led to the comic books and this and that, and he'd be swinging the sword and chasing the fans, and uh, so he just played on that. When Tiger was coming out, everybody just ran away. That's how it was. Nobody else made it that way. Tiger realized you had to leave to become a bigger star. And then when you came back, you, were, you could coast. You know, you could come back and wrestle in front of the hometown crowds and, and bring all that recognition back. And so it's an interesting... Uh, choice guys make and in Tiger's case he never really worked a lot through North America his big bread and butter became uh, Asia uh, and Japan. 
Tiger didn't show anything that he was a good guy or a nice human being, anything. He was all the way bad guy in front of everybody. Everybody thought he was crazy. And everybody believed it. And that was all about Tiger Jitsu. Tiger Jitsu. series for Antonio Noki and there was a, a balloting a, a fan selection a dream match and overwhelming response was to see the biggest villain in history of Japanese wrestling tag up with the, the greatest hero in Japanese wrestling the greatest hero obviously Antonio Noki and the greatest villain being my father Tiger Jeet Singh <laughs> What really hit a chord with me was my father revered as an icon, a living legend. You had 60,000 people chanting, sing, sing, sing. But up until that time, in a nutshell, it came like uh, what this man had sacrificed, what he had created for his family as a livelihood for his family back at home in Toronto. All the bumps and bruises, 30 years, blood, sweat and tears. Watching his match, uh, I grew more emotional. Uh, <laughs> just seeing him, you know? And uh, <sighs> to this day, it still chokes me up. Sacrifice so much. I think that's, you know, that's what hit me. Just the sacrifices this man made. Then I understood right there, you know, why he wanted to work there and he didn't want to wrestle in the United States. It's a beautiful society, beautiful culture. They still revere you as like a godlike figure. They feel honored to be in your presence. And that all came into me. It's because they respect wrestling as a sport. acre estate in Milton, Ontario, is what the Huns family calls home. The family assets are worth millions, and business ventures include hotels, real estate, and property development. All paid for by Tiger's blood and sweat from the ring, and some wise investments by his wife, Suchit. My father, he says, uh, when you get married, the woman will either make your your life uh, living hell or living heaven. Come on, guys, inside. Come on, you're going to have your dessert here. So we're very blessed that mom has made our Sanjiro? life a living heaven. I think she's done unbelievable. Because of her upbringing as well, and it was instilled upon her that family is utmost, that comes first. Fame and fortune comes and goes. But that foundation, that nucleus that she's created will be with us forever. 